greetings programs and welcome to the live edition of the nerd cave retro show my name is jason robbins and i am a very mentally and physically exhausted derek diamond <laughs> sounds like you had quite an uh an adventure on the way here yeah that's a mild way of putting it so i had to work over in destin today uh covering an event left around 2 30 uh, got stuck in uh, traffic because of an accident that happened at the Crestview exit. So sat in traffic for about uh, 10 to 15 minutes, then rushed home. And for those who are local to Pensacola, you know how most of the drivers are here. So had a little more adventure as my fiance, who's sitting in the audience can attest, but I'm here and happy to be doing the podcast. Fantastic. So uh, how, how was your Pensacon yesterday? It was good. Um, I know we were talking a little bit um, when I was on the way here. Um, it's a little bit of a different experience for me because I'm still kind of used to being a volunteer and like working for the convention. So it's almost like I don't know how to turn that off in some <laughs> ways, but it, it's, it's been good. Uh, we got to meet some cool people, saw some cool costumes, got uh, some cool merch, so... Not uh, not too much to complain about. What about you? I got my Halloween 3 VHS tape signed by Mr. Tom Atkins today. I knew you today. would. And uh, look at Jacob over there shaking his head no. <laughs> <laughs> who here, by show of hands, who likes Halloween 3? Who hates Halloween 3? See, we more people like it. Who has never seen Halloween 3? That's your, uh, that's your homework for this weekend is to go home and watch Halloween 3. Just don't expect to see Michael Myers. But yeah. it's still a good movie. Go in with that. If you go in knowing that it's a science fiction horror movie and not a slasher horror movie, I think you'll enjoy it a lot more. Well, I think if you know why it was made that way, you would appreciate <laughs> it even more. Jacob's what? face is turning red because he just wants to... to... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we, we we even did a, uh, I was actually on the, uh, the Jester's Court not too long ago with uh, Mr. Mike Evelins, who's the back of the room, Mr. B-Rez Coffee himself, uh, did an episode of the Jester's Court where I defended Halloween 3 for an hour straight, and I don't think I let anybody else talk, so uh, if you want to go back and listen to that episode, it's available. I feel like you should get some type of like monetary thanks for as much as you've defended that movie. I think so. I think uh, I, I think they should let me uh, um, do a remake of it as well. Who would, would you bring back Tom Atkins? He would have a part in it, but I would have to find like a current actor that's uh, very Tom Atkins-like. Because nobody could do what he did. You know, he was just, he was like, he was like the great value Burt Reynolds. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I never yeah, thought of that. But we need the great value, Tom Atkins. Mr. Jacob Craig over here, my co-host for the Open Micers podcast. No, he should be the new Connell Cochran. Yes. I would be okay with that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's okay. I can act like it. A lot of people in Hollywood say they're actors now and they can't do it, so yeah. it's okay. But uh, what we wanted to do for this episode, we're going to try to have uh, as much of a normal episode as we could. But uh, I think we only have, what, like 45 minutes? No, we, we've got the full hour. Oh, full it's, hour? It's, it's oh, until six. Nice. So, yeah, no, we're good. All right, because there's, uh, there's a news story here I really want to hear you say the headline for. But for the first one here, we're going to do, uh, let's see, this is, come on. You, you would give me the one that you're talking about. <laughs> Okay, this one comes, oh, uh, let me say this first. Today's stories were submitted to us by Mr. Tyler Watson and Mr. Armez Jackson. And if you have a story you'd like us to cover, send them to nerdcaveretro at gmail.com. This first story is from nintendolife.com. Thousands of dollars of rare factory sealed Super Nintendo games unearthed after 27 years in storage. Let's see, highlights include Castlevania Bloodlines, Brain Lord, Breath of Fire 2, Zombies Ate My Neighbor, Sunset Riders, Contra Hardcore, TMNT, Turtles in Time, Chrono Trigger, Final Fantasy 3, and Secret of Evermore. Thousands of dollars of new old stock mixed in with some more common titles like FIFA and Madden. Uh, let's see, Turtles in Time itself is worth over $1,400 in factory sealed form. Uh, Final Fantasy 3 up to $1,200, Sunset Riders $750. And even Chrono Trigger as well, over $600 in good used condition. 
I think I would probably have a heart attack if I came across this. You wouldn't even be able to reap the benefits. You'd just I'd be dead. You'd die. I would, I, would, die. I would do the same thing. It's insane because a lot of these games I've seen out of box in stores like in town and elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Like Sunset Riders, just the cartridge is hundreds of dollars, which is insane to me. But I, I honestly can say I don't know how I would react. Yeah. If I, I mean, they say the they found this these. in storage, like because uh, it was packed away and placed in storage. Like, what kind of storage are we talking about here? Like, just someone's storage container, like uh, their the, monthly storage, or or is this like some kind of weird Walmart storage facility that like got stuck in the corner somewhere? Well, in the pictures, it looks like they're stored in your traditional like plastic tubs, yeah. which are are good storage bins. So I, I could see them lasting for as long as they have, but you just got to think, whoever boxed those up had no idea the amount that they would be worth. I would retire. Later. Yeah. <laughs> we could take the show on the road. Yeah. <laughs> we could. Yeah. Until That's, I get stuck in traffic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, this next story I, I, I pulled up just because I just want to hear Derek say this headline because this is the greatest headline ever. This comes to us also from NintendoLife.com. The world's first gamer nut butter, let me say that again, the world's first gamer nut butter is made for gamers to eat while gaming. <laughs> no one ever thinks of the gamers. We had to suffer through decades of disrespect, forced to eat regular non-gamer meals with the rest of the normies. I'm not picky when it comes to food, so I don't fall in that category. They say that some foods are the breakfast of champions, but what about the Smash Brothers champions? What about people who always win at Mario Kart? Our savior is here, and it's peanut butter shaped. It just keeps getting better. <laughs> the nut butter in question is called Jobby Pong, a name that was almost certainly not focus tested in Scotland. <laughs> it is made as a collaboration between Jobby, a Malaysian peanut butter company, and Zotac Gaming Malaysia, a PC parts manufacturer. Uh, the name is actually a combination of the Jobby founders' names, Joseph and Debbie, plus a reference to Pong, because you've got to get a gamer reference in there. And the butter itself is a combination to a crunchy peanut mousse made from dry roasted peanuts mixed with freeze-dried blueberries and strawberries to get that PB&J taste in one jar. So when I pulled up the article and I saw this, it reminded me of like that protein powder that you buy at like GNC or the vitamin shop. That's what I initially thought it was. The thing I'm wondering is like, is it really that hard to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich these days that we have to have a certain... No, I mean, even I can do it. It's not that hard. It's supposed to be eaten by the spoon... And used in the same way that you would eat an energy bar. Who eats an energy bar with a spoon? <laughs> well, you know what we have to do. We have to, one of us has to get a jar of this. I think we should have uh, Jobby uh, send us uh, a couple of jars of this to try out on the show. Yeah, and eat it on the air. We'll eat it on the air if they send us a, yeah, a exactly. jar of this. It does look like, it, it, I wish we, oh, I'll, I'll turn it around so everybody can see it. It looks like something you would buy at GNC. Like it looks like a fitness product. Yeah. I don't know. It's it's got chunks in it, like. But it's not like. It's not yeah, no. It's, like, it's not like crunchy peanut. There's like. There's like different colored chunks in it, and I don't know if I want to eat that. But I will do it for the show. I'll do it for the show. Yeah. So if anyone from Jobby is listening or watching this, send us some jars. Uh, and the last story is about the third Sonic movie on its way. And also, there's a new spinoff series starring Idris Elba. Uh, let's see, it's Sonic 2 set to come out in April. And Paramount announced on last Tuesday that Sonic 3 is already in development, along with a Paramount Plus series centered around Knuckles that will star Idris Elba. Uh, it says Sonic 2 is already set to expand the world of the movie franchise, bringing in Tails and Knuckles from the video game. Of course, Sonic himself will also return, along with Jim Carrey's Dr. Evil Robotnik and James Marsden's Tom. Um, I'm just glad I, I, it, they could just give Dr. Jim Carrey his own spinoff series, and I would be happy because that was uh, Jim Carrey and, and Jim, his, at his Jim Carreyist 
in that movie. Well, if you think about it, that really revitalized his career, and no one expected that. No one expected that movie to be any good, and I know I've been kind of the flag bearer mm -hmm. of that movie since it came out, but if you haven't watched it, it's truly a fun, good movie. It's worth watching. And what I think I'm a little curious about is that they would announce the third movie before the second one even comes out. It makes me really curious as to how it's going to end, because they've already released the logo for it, too. It's not in that article, but it has, you know how in the Sonic 2 logo, it has the two tails coming out? Mm -hmm. Well, the three is black and red, which makes me think they're going to bring Shadow the Hedgehog in. Yeah. As a more old-school Sonic fan, I'd love to see uh, Metal Sonic be brought in, but I know Shadow is a more popular, like, mainstream character, so I'm assuming it means him, but... Honestly, they, they just go crazy with it because they already put, you know, we already accepted that weird world that Sonic is in the first movie. So why not just go absolutely bonkers with it for the next two movies? And you can make more than three movies. Like I was actually talking with Josh, who's uh, in the audience. You could easily do six movies. Oh, yeah. With the franchise. Well, just, I mean, and just bring in a couple of new characters each movie. Well, I'm just happy they're doing a TV show. A spinoff series. That'd be cool. That I'm also very curious about because is it going to be a prequel? Is it going to be a sequel? I don't know. Who knows? Has everybody here seen the Sonic movie? Yeah. It's quite you good. You haven't seen it? It's quite good. It, it's That's your job this weekend is to make her watch <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog. I've heard some people say it's good. Some people say it's bad. So I'm still kind of decided. Oh, it's, it's, worth, it's worth watching. It. Yeah. It's definitely. worth watching it for Jim Carrey alone. Yeah. Uh, Paramount Plus. Just get the Blu-ray. I did. Yeah. It's worth it. I, I have the Blu-ray. I have the digital copy. I have Paramount Plus. I have all of it. <laughs> but but um, as far as the Knuckles series goes, I'll just say this real quick. I don't think they're going to go this route because I don't know what Knuckles' backstory is going to be. I assume we're going to get a little bit of it in Sonic 2. But if anyone's read the, the Knuckles comic book from back in the 90s, Knuckles' backstory is really, really cool. Like, he comes from a long lineage of guardians who guard the Master Emerald as well as the Chaos Emeralds. So I don't know that they're going to touch on that in the movie. I'm assuming they won't, but I think it'd be pretty cool. See, it sounds so dumb, but it, the movie was so good. Like, I don't, I don't understand how they made that work. I, I don't know. I had... <laughs> Very, very low expectations going in. Like, I totally expected to go on our next show and say, this movie was terrible. Yeah. I hated it. It was awesome. But, but it was great. I loved it. Uh, and, and now we're going to move into this month in video game history. In February 20th of 1987, Konami releases Contra. Iconic classic Nintendo. Like, when you think of the NES, Contra's got to be one of the first five titles you think of. One of the games that, with the, the Konami code, goes from one of the hardest games of all time the easiest. Yes. Every time I see the Contra poster, I think of the movie Predator. Well, it's because they put <laughs> that is Arnold Schwarzenegger and uh, Sly Stallone that they just fair stole their images for the for the cover. I wonder if there will ever be a Contra revival. I don't know. I wish Konami would do something. Why not do a Contra movie? I mean, all these other video game <laughs> movies are coming out. Why not do a Contra and do like a tribute to some 80s action movies? Who would we, uh, we want to uh, cast in the Contra movie? Well, I, mean, I think it would you, have to be The Rock. Yeah, The Rock has to be one. <laughs> it has to be. I would say Vin Diesel, but they hate each other. Um, John Cena. Yeah. And Batista's the villain. Yes. <laughs> I like it. You'd get the WWE audience. Where's our movie check? Exactly. Uh, me. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, who would direct it? No. no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, who? Uh, that's that's a good question. I mean, I think you go all out and you just make it cheesy. Yeah. James Gunn, that's yeah, it. That's, that's who you get, yep. yeah. He's the only person that could pull that off. Has anyone in here watched Peacemaker? Yes. So good. I have not seen uh, it's, it. Yet. It's so good. One of the best series to come out in a long time. 
And James Gunn's writing and directing all the episodes of season two, which makes me very happy. But uh, February of 1989, Atari Games releases the hard driving arcade game with filled polygon 3D graphics, physics simulation, and a force feedback steering wheel. I feel like every montage I see of classic video games from the 80s, I see clips of this game. Mm. Anybody play hard driving back in the day? Nobody. I just want it's got it's got one of the coolest um, the actual like it, it's it looks like a car and you just sit in it and you drive it and, and the graphics suck but it was the closest thing you get to actually driving because it had like stick shift and everything you had to actually know how to drive stick shift to play the game. What was cool about those old arcade machines and I I didn't really grow up going to the arcades. But any time I did go, it was all about those specialty machines that would look like cars. Like you see the Mario Kart ones now that look like you're almost like in a cart. Mm -hmm. Those make you want to play it. Like the physics, like the physical aspect of it matters. Ah, I miss arcades. Uh, in February of 1992, Cubert is released for the Game Boy. The most foul mouth <laughs> character in video game history. That's a movie we need to get is Cubert. I was thinking, actually thinking about this on the drive over. We need a, because Disney can make it happen because eventually they're just going to own everything. Cubert and R2-D2 crossover. I like it. At least most, a scene. The two most foul-mouthed. And you just have C-3PO faint because of all the profanity he's <laughs> hearing between the two. It's like, what are they saying? Oh, you don't want to know. And, uh, uh, oh, crap, what's his name? We could, to voice Cubert. Uh, <laughs> what's his Chris name? Chris Pratt? Yeah, Chris Pratt. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why not? He's voicing yeah, everybody else. Everybody else. Uh, February of 1994, Sega releases Sonic the Hedgehog 3 in North America, featuring the first appearance of a character we just talked about, Knuckles the Echidna. A lot of people consider this their favorite Sonic game. It's definitely up there. I think 2 is slightly better, but 3 is really cool in the sense that it does introduce Knuckles and you get the crossover compatibility with, with the Sonic and Knuckles game. You know what I was just... I, I, I was just it just popped in my head. I was looking on Twitter earlier today. Has everybody heard the controversy with um, uh, John, uh, what's his name, uh, the voice of Bender? Um, yeah. He, um, he, you know, the, the whole kerfuffle with the, the new Futurama thing. And, uh, you know, John DiMaggio, or is that his name, DiMaggio? Yep. He's coming back, not not asked to come back to do play Bender. So somebody put up a news thing that said, breaking news, Chris, Pat, Chris Pratt has been... <laughs> <laughs> he's going to voice Bender. I'm like, no, no. He's going to voice no. Bender. He's going to voice Fry. He's just going <laughs> to voice all of them. I still wonder what he's going to do for Mario. That's just like the weirdest casting ever. I'm really trying to hold out hope for a trailer, but I'm scared. Yeah. <laughs> I might cry on the air when we do the show after the trailer yeah. drops. Like, I might actually cry. We'll have to have a special episode, uh, Derek <laughs> Suicide Watch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, second to last one uh, 1997 Nintendo releases Mario Kart 64 in North America I'm not a big fan of the uh, 64 racing games but, yeah. here's my thing on Mario Kart 64 I'm not a big Nintendo 64 I like it certain games but it's not my favorite system and not, not that I don't want to say it's not my favorite system that Controller sucks. Let's just face it. That controller's terrible. That's why when people complain about their Joy-Cons going out on the Switch, I'm like, well, yeah. we could go back to the N64 controller. Yeah, no. You want that? No, thanks. So, I love the Mario Kart franchise, but I'll be honest, Mario Kart 64, I just couldn't get into as much. I, don't, I can't really pinpoint a specific reason. It just didn't click with me like a Double Dash or you know, Mario Kart 8. It just didn't. It's not a bad game. Yeah. I just... Are they putting any of these tracks in the new uh, new bundle they're putting out for the uh, Mario Kart 8? Well, they're putting out uh, tracks from all of them. Wow. Dating back to the original. Are they going to look like crap like they did on the 64? I, I think they should make the SNES ones just look... Exactly. Yeah, like it's it. exactly <laughs> like they would. Uh, I think that'd be hilarious. Why not? Yeah. Our last... Story for this month in video game history. February 11th of 2002. Crazy to think that's 20 years ago already. 
Super Mario Advance 2 Super Mario World is released for the Game Boy Advance in North America. My mind was blown when the Game Boy Advance came out because you were essentially playing the Super Nintendo in the palm of your hands. Yeah. But when they did these Mario Advance games, they released them out of order. Like Mario Advance was Super Mario Brothers 2. Mm -hmm. Mario Advance 2 is Super <laughs> Mario World. I can't remember what the third one was. I, it may have been Yoshi's Island. I don't remember. I, somebody was just talking about it the other day, and now I don't remember. It was? It. Okay. Which, which one was Super Mario Brothers 3? Okay. Yeah, it's kind of like the whole Final Fantasy <laughs> number thing. Like, I just don't get it. I knew we'd get a Final Fantasy <laughs> reference out of you at some point. <laughs> but, I mean, they were still fun to play. I mean, there were little tweaks. Like, you could save wherever you wanted instead of, you know, having to beat a castle or a fortress. So they made it a little bit easier in that aspect, but you pretty know, much the same game. And that's the, the lovely thing about... You know, especially with the Switch and, and them putting all the uh, the Nintendo and Super Nintendo stuff, is at least having save states on all those old games. Yeah. Even though I just, I think this, we could have another conversation about this, but with video game preservation and how hardcore Nintendo is on litigation with people, like the guy that was uh, the, the emulation guy that got like three years or whatever, Nintendo actually sent a thank you letter to the prosecutors in that case. Like, this poor guy, all he wanted to do was just have a site where you could get old games, and he's in jail for three years now. That's like, cold. That kind of sucks. So I made this joke um, on my other show a couple of weeks ago. With the book of Boba Fett, you know, they hired the guy who did the improved mm -hmm. version of the de-aged Luke for book of Boba Fett, and it looked much better. Had someone done that with a Nintendo game, they would have sent them a cease and desist. Oh, and said, please remove your property immediately. Yeah. Oh, I know. Even though, oh, you made it better. Because here's the thing. The only reason I emulate a lot of stuff is because there's no other way to get it, Nintendo. If you, let, if you give me a, a way to get it and pay for it, I will gladly pay for it. Well, they hate money. So. But here's another thing, too, that we have to think about, like, 30 something year old games like you know like just pick some you know random game that nobody would ever play anymore on like like I don't know let's say like uh some NFL game for like the Super Nintendo like that game's already had its its day 30 years ago and you can't reissue it now because you would have to owe the NFL money for players that aren't even in the league anymore and like I don't like there has to be a certain point where it, you can't make any more money on this stuff and just say, hey, this is a preservation type of thing. They should want it preserved. I mean, it's a piece of their history. Yeah. It's a piece of pop culture history. Exactly. But they, they don't look at it that way. No. Stupid we're, we're, accused, we're accused of being like hardcore Nintendo fanboys, but I feel like we give them <laughs> fair criticism. <laughs> I figure one of these days somebody from Nintendo is going to listen to this show. And be like, maybe, maybe we should actually do something about this. Because we're not the only voices screaming about this. Like, video game preservation is something that's very, very important. And they need to understand that. And they should be the ones to do it. Yeah. They're Nintendo. They've been here the longest. Yeah. I mean, other than Atari. But who wants to play Atari games? Yeah. <laughs> All we can do is... But they need to be there. You know, like, yeah. they have to be there for it's people a piece of history. go back. It is a piece but of before history. before I go on for two hours about that, let's go ahead and do our Patreon shout-outs for this week. Sure. So, as always, we want to shout-out our awesome patrons over at patreon.com slash nerdcaveretro, Mr. Tyler Watson, Axeblade07, Daniel Salmon, Armez Jackson, Hand Solo, not to be confused with his cousin Han, Carlos Longoria, Staff Sergeant Sketch, Gus and Penny, Matthew Salmon, Joey Image, Ron Johnson, Mixmaster, and Mr. Mike Eveland himself, who is here in the audience with us. Woo! Thank you for keeping the lights on for us at the Nerd Cave Retro Show. If you want to be a part of our awesome Patreon community, we do fun commentary tracks once a month. We've done, like, watch-alongs for Super Mario Brothers, uh, Clue, so many fun, like Christmas yeah. Vacation we yeah. did a couple of months ago. We do a lot of cartoons, like yep. DuckTales and real Ghostbusters, things like that. So if you want early access to those and... The option to vote on what we review on the show, you can just head over to patreon.com slash nerdcaveretro. 
And what we're doing for this episode is Derek came up. Uh, who actually came up with this? Mr. Armes Jackson. Mr. Armes Jackson threw this out there for our top five guilty pleasure games. Now I had to approach this a different way than the way I look at like uh, guilty pleasure music or movies. Like I like when it comes to music. Like you know I I love the Go Go's. But I don't want my metalhead friends to see me driving around town like vacation heaven. Well, you have a reputation to uphold. Yeah, exactly. Like, I love Steel Magnolias the movie, Mr. Nothing. Tyler Watson. And uh, it's a good movie, and I like it. But, you know, I'm not going to shout it out to the world on a podcast or anything. Like you did just now? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to come at this with, um, with another way of looking at it. So the way I look at it is top five. Guilty pleasure games. These are the games that more or less are just a time suck for me. That like I put so many hours into these games, I probably should have been doing something else more important. But here we are. I look at it as that and also just games that you may not talk about all that often, but that you've gone through and you just play over and over and over. Because I've most of mine are a combination of that. So uh, I guess we'll start. Did you have any runner-ups? I did not. I only have one runner-up, and this is going on here because I love these games and I put a lot of time into them, is the Sid Meier Civilization games. I, I have to – they're like crack. I, I can't put them down once I start. Like I'll sit there – even Civ, I have Civ Six on the Switch, and I will sit there and play that thing until my battery's dead and then have to go plug it in and keep playing. I, I guess I do have kind of a runner-up. I would say any variation of Wordle. <laughs> I sp- yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody, put, do your Wordles yeah, right do your, now. Do, well, they, they have Wordles for, like, I think they have, like, a nerd one. They have a football one. They have yeah. Wordle for, like, every category. They have now. a new, new one called, like, Quartle, where it's, like, something like that, yeah. or something like that. I can barely do one. You want me to do four? Yeah, my, uh, my 30-day streak in Wordle broke yesterday and I was I was quite upset oh that's uh I, I wanted to break like half the equipment in my office <laughs> but I, it's okay I did it like for about three days and I was like man I'm done I'm good. It's, it's not everybody's cup of tea yeah. not really yeah. I mean I like word games but yeah I, I liked words with friends that was fun to do words with friends was fun things would get heated with words yeah. with friends especially <laughs> if you were with the person oh. <laughs> you sit, sit across from them like just glare across the room <laughs> not that I've done that or anything uh, you want to start off with your number five? Sure. So my number five is a game that doesn't get as much love as I think it should, and I've played this game numerous times, and that is Sonic Adventure for the Dreamcast. Hmm. Sonic has not had the easiest transition into the 3D realm of gaming, but there's something about just exploring the hub worlds of Sonic Adventure, whether it's Station Square <coughs> which is your like metropolis city type area. You have ruins, you have a Robotnik's egg carrier. You can just roam around and do stuff. And it's fun. It may sound very boring, but to me it's very fun. And like I, I like the storyline of that game a lot. The gameplay, I mean, it's not the greatest, but it was early 3D gaming, so you kind of take what you can get with that. But I, I love Sonic Adventure. I would love if... The Sonic movies go beyond three. I would love for them to adapt that story as maybe Sonic the Hedgehog 4. I still have never played any of those, the Sonic 3D games. Like, it was just completely... You, you should give them a the shot. They're, 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 these days. They're, yeah, they're worth checking out. You won't like them as much as I do. But. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for my number five, uh, I combined four different games into one because they're all pretty much the same. The Kingdom Rush games. Anybody played Kingdom Rush? Anybody like uh, tower defense type of games? I love tower defense games. And the Kingdom Rush because the pop culture references that are in it, uh, the, the cartoony nature of it, the, the way each game up to uh, the very last one, Kingdom Rush Vengeance, is just like they took everything they learned from the first three games and just perfected it at that point. And I, I can't stop playing it. Uh, last time I checked, I logged into Steam the other day. I had 54 hours into Vengeance. Never played them. You should. It's good. 
I have a but, very obsessive personality but with not games. everybody likes tower defense games. Though. True. I'd be willing to try them. I don't think I've ever even attempted to play any of those games. I think you'll like them just for the pop culture references. Yeah. I'll have to give those a shot. My number four, one of Rare's more obscure games, Viva Pinata for the I Xbox that's 360. A good game. It can get very frustrating at times. What is the point of that game? I've heard so many people talk about it. So that. you have different animals that take, they're basically pinatas. And you have this little garden, and various pinatas will come in, and you essentially, like, take care of them. <laughs> By take care of them, you mean smash them with a hammer or a bat? Well, you do have to do that eventually to turn them good. But just, I'm trying to think of a game to compare it to. It's one that it sound the concept sounds so stupid, but once you get into it, like you just want to keep bringing in more pinatas into your garden, just more and more and more. And it next, sounds next like thing, the ravings of a lunatic. Well, I have been accused of that. <laughs> but uh, no, Viva Pinata is fun. I, they did a, a sequel, I think, called Trouble in Paradise that I didn't get as into as the original one. But what well, one of Rare's more underrated games? Wow, that was that was rare, huh? Mm-hmm. No it was after they were bought it. out by Microsoft. Wow, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. uh, for my number four, I think everybody uh, has played this game at least once in their life, Tetris. Yes. Going all the way back to the original NES. I still have my original NES cart. I owned it on pretty much every single place I could own it since it's come out. And even with the new Tetris 99 that came a few years ago. And what's the new? I haven't gotten the new one. Tetris Effect, I think, is the new new Tetris game. I haven't gotten it yet, but I've sunk probably thousands of hours just playing Tetris. Top three Game Boy game for me. Oh, yeah. That I was the reason that to buy a Game so much. Boy. That like, game was the Game Boy system seller. It really was because it's a game that you don't really have to have much knowledge of beforehand because it's very self-explanatory. Anybody can dive in and play Tetris. And it has one of the best theme songs of all time in video uh -huh. game history. And it gets stuck in your head. Dun, dun, dun. Every time I have to do something, like at work, like I have to like, put stuff in certain places, that song pops in my head ever since I was a kid. So in Super Smash Brothers Brawl for the Wii, the soundtrack was fully orchestrated, and they did an orchestrated version of the Tetris theme. <laughs> it is awesome. I'll need to send you the link to it. I think you'd love it. There's a really interesting documentary about the, how Nintendo got the rights to Tetris. It's on, uh, it was uh, actually, it's uh, by the Gaming Historian on YouTube, and I highly recommend everybody go watch that, because, like, just the way the rights to that game were so crazy, because of, you know, it was made, it was developed by a Russian, and because he was a Russian, the Russian government owns everything that you do, so it took a little work for Nintendo to actually get the rights to it, so... But they made it happen. But Tengen thought they had the rights to it, which is why they started developing the black cartridges. But they didn't have what they didn't realize. They didn't have the home version rights. They had the arcade rights. So Nintendo was like, hey, you got to take all those black carts and go destroy them. My number three is Harvest Moon for the Super Nintendo. Mm. Easy concept. You inherit a farm. You grow potatoes, turnips, you can get married, start a family. It's very much like a, almost like one of the first real-time games, because there's day, there's night, there's seasons, so you can only, like, grow certain See, things. That's kind of why I, I stopped playing, um, uh, what's, what's the name of it? It got really big last year, uh, Animal Crossing, because it's just chores the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I felt that way when the first one came out for the GameCube. It's one of the reasons why I didn't get into it. Not discounting its popularity, because people love that game. But I just, it never really appealed to me, which might sound a little hypocritical, because I love Harvest Moon, and it seems kind of similar. But I don't know, it's just one of those games that I like to go back and play every now and then, and then the next thing I know, I've completed like half a year yeah. in the game. Because it just, time just, it goes by quick. And uh, for my number three is one that's very similar to Tetris, and I can't stop playing this once I start playing it. And even now that it's on the Switch, that this is probably 50% of my Switch time is Dr. Mario. Great game. I just can't stop playing it. There's something about that. I don't know what it is about that game. It's just 
I, it's like I, I have like super ADD with it. Like once I'm locked in, I can't, it won't let me go. Well, I think you've had various iterations of Tetris that haven't been as successful, but you add the Mario element and you add a little bit of like a colorful flair to it with the different colored germs, but take that Tetris formula and you have a fun game. And then you got that music, the dun 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 yep. dun dun dun, and it just, ugh, it's everything that Nintendo has that sauce. That special sauce. One of the cooler moments from uh, Smash Brothers Melee is when you fight Dr. Mario, and then all of a sudden you hear that, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, this is so cool. And then they put it on the Super Nintendo. With, uh, they, if they come out with a new version, why have they not done, like, Dr. Mario 99? True. It seems like a perfect yeah. game to do, do the 99 version of. I'm still mad that Mario 99 is not anymore. I don't, don't make, don't, let's not. <laughs> So many times I came in second place in that game just to barely lose, and I would just get so angry. Dude, I fired up Tetris 99 the other night, and I haven't played in like six months, and I got all the way to like number seven on my first nice. try. I was like, what is happening right now? And then the next game, I got knocked out at like 90. I'm like, yeah, that was a fluke. That's the thing with those 99 games is you just never know like what hand you're going to be dealt. Oh, I know. My number two is Pokemon Yellow for the Game Boy. Easily my favorite Pokemon game of all time because it was a loose adaptation of the anime. Uh, it recently gotten into that. Um, so I didn't have, I think it was the WB that the anime came on back in the day. I didn't have that channel. But I remember my mom took me to Books a Million and they had a VHS tape of like the first three or four episodes. Hmm. So I got it and then was hooked. And then they announced Yellow where you have Pikachu as your starter, you run into Team Rocket like you would do in the anime. The characters looked more like they did in the cartoon. It's essentially the same game as Red and Blue, but the fact that it was more based off the cartoon makes it better. I still never played a Pokemon game, ever. I downloaded that the Pokemon uh, game for the phone that came out a few years ago. Pokemon but, Go? Yeah, and I, but I, never, I downloaded it, and then it was like, try, you know, I had to make an account. I'm like, I <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so, when that game first came out, this is when I still worked at the Blue Wahoos, we, there, was, um, there was a lot of Pokemon around the ballpark, so we would actually go out and walk the warning track, and this was like on a game day in the afternoon, <laughs> so we're just looking at our phones, and we look up, and we're passing the Wahoos dugout, one of the coaches is just looking at us, and he's like, y'all ain't playing that Pokemon game, are you? It's like, no, sir. Did you... Did you guys hear the story? I think it was, uh, it was two police officers. I, I'm not sure where they were. It was like Oregon or something like that. And they got fired because there was, they got called to a uh, bank robbery in progress. And they said, nope. They were, and they went and played Pokemon Go instead. They had to catch the Snorlax. Yeah, well, that's yeah. what they were trying to catch, the Snorlax. Yeah. I'm like, uh, you better get your priorities straight like, there, man. <laughs> And then, yeah, because they turned around because they, they got fired, and then they tried to sue the city for getting fired. And like, well, no, <laughs> that's not how this works. I like Pokemon as much as the next guy, but robbery, yeah. Snorlax. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My number one, I've talked about this on the show. This is the only game that I have completed every achievement for the Xbox 360, and that is Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga. Oh, yeah. I have played this game so much that I can, like, play it in my sleep. You know, it, I don't know what it was, but it was just, I think, that goofy formula where, like, you, you can die, but it doesn't really affect you. Like, you just pop up wherever you die. And it's Star Wars. And I loved Legos as a kid, so it's like, what more could anyone ask? <laughs> it, it, this was before, obviously, the prequel trilogy came out. So it's episodes one through six which they are coming out with a Skywalker Saga Lego game that includes all nine, which I'm really excited to play. But this is one that, you know, like you can unlock different characters. Um, the, the best part was you could unlock the ghost versions of Anakin, Yoda, and Obi-Wan, and you were, like, invincible. Like, everything would go through you. I got the, uh, the Star Wars trilogy uh, on GameCube Lego mm -hmm. uh, at the at the Goodwill a few weeks ago for nice. two ninety nine, Freaking score. The Lego games are a lot of fun. Like, the Marvel one's great. 
yeah, Batman is really good too, but that, that Lego Star Wars is just a little bit higher, in my opinion. The only game I've ever 100%ed, and that was it was on the 360, was Batman Arkham Asylum. And thank God for YouTube, because that was the only way I was able to get some of those Riddler <laughs> trophies. Like, if it wasn't for YouTube, there's no way I would have finished that game 100%. No. I, had, I never completed those games. Like, I don't know what it was, but, like, I, I like the look. They were okay, but they just weren't my style of game. I like the first one the best because it was more, like, because it, it set place in the asylum, so it's more, like, yeah. uh, compact. Second one was uh, Arkham City was really good. The third one I didn't. I got about halfway through. I didn't like the driving portions, like so much driving in the Batmobile, and like I just feel stupid trying to drive that thing. I'm like bashing into everything. Like, it's not fun at all. Like you would think it would be fun to drive the Batmobile, and it's not. You would think, but that's that's actually disappointing to hear. Yeah, yeah. I might go back and I still have my PS4 version. I might try to go back and play you it should. again. Uh, for my number one, and I think a lot of the older people here might agree with me on this one, uh, I combined three games that started in the 90s when I got my first PC, Windows PC. Solitaire, Minesweeper, and Free Cell. Does anybody this Those are day good choices. Know, even know how to play Minesweeper? Or freeze. How do you play that? Is there rules to that game? It's like Sudoku, but backwards. I don't even know how to play Sudoku. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would just, I would spend hours just tapping on random like tiles, and I never, I didn't know there was like any rhyme or reason to it. I thought it was just luck, luck, and then free cell. I still don't know what free cell is, but man, solitaire that. When you finish it and all the cars go, like that's so. Like, you can still see the pattern on the screen of like, like going, and you yeah. see all the cards are just like all full of dancing cards and, and everything was great. I have, I've been a Mac user since like 2008, so I haven't had a, a, a Windows PC since like 2008. Do they still put that solitaire and stuff on? I might just buy a PC just for that. <laughs> it's one of the very few games I have on my phone. Mm -hmm. I don't have any games on my phone. You should get Solitaire. It's good. If I do, you'll never talk to me again. <laughs> then don't get Solitaire on your phone. <laughs> <sighs> no. Um, so we actually, I put out a call for some of our, our Patreons, but only a few of them wrote back because I don't, I don't think, I, I, we had a lot of people in our Discord saying they, they didn't really understand the parameters of what guilty pleasure meant. So we did get a couple of lists in. These are from uh, Mr. Carlos Longoria. I am the Rampage. Rampage. At number five, he put Aliens vs. Predator, the arcade game. Best arcade game beat em up ever made. I wish they would release this on home consoles. I thought they did release this for uh, the Super Nintendo. I thought they did too. I've never played it, but... Wrong? I don't know. Let's Google this. Yeah. Uh, while you do that, I'll, I'll read his number four. Uh, his number four is Street Fighter III Third Impact, and he calls it the best 2D uh, Street Fighter game ever made. This game didn't get the hype it deserved. I never hear about Street Fighter one or three. Yeah. Two's the one that gets all One's the hype. One's terrible. Don't ever. That's play what that I hear. Game. Two's fun though. You know, I reviewed it a couple of weeks ago on the show, and it <laughs> poor was poor guy. Poor Capcom. They tried to go to three. Everybody's like, no, two's better. Stop it. <laughs> so they just put out like another 80 versions of two. And yes, they did make Aliens vs. Predator for the Super Nintendo, and you can buy it now for $41 on eBay. Only 40 bucks. Yeah. Not, not bad at all. Uh, number three is Super Mario Brothers. Need I say more? Overrated? Maybe? Overplayed? Yeah. Super Mario Brothers is still, I would say, in the top five greatest games of all time, because if it was not for Super Mario Brothers, we would not be where we are today. It's up there with the most important video games too. But it just it, it brought you it taught you how to do this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, his number two is Double Dragon Neon, '80s cheesy goodness at its best. Uh, he says, "Try to find a better game. I dare you. I Double <laughs> Dragon dare you." 
oh, wait, this isn't number one. I've seen him stream this, I think, a couple of times. And it looks really good. Yeah. Um, I might I, – I should try this, but, you know, I, I think that uh, – what was the – why am I blanking on the, the Sega version of – Final Fight, like Sega's answer to Final Fight. Um, oh, what was Streets it? Streets of Rage. Yes. The new Streets of Rage game is so freaking good. Like, I, I still I need can't to play it. praise that game enough. If you're into, uh, like, side-scrolling beat-em-ups, the new Streets of Rage is just, it's like, it's like butter. His number one is Mega Man X. It says one of the easier Mega Man games out there. Sure, it's challenging, but man, it's just fun. I continually, I continuously revisit this game every year. I never got into the Mega Man X games. I am, I'm a Mega Man mm -hmm. fanboy, but I never got into the X games. I've played the first Mega Man X. This might be embarrassing for me to say because it kind of counteracts what he said. I thought it was actually quite difficult. But <laughs> there's a lot of dialogue in that game. It is very dialogue Mega heavy. Mega Man does not need to have dialogue at all. But it's still a really fun game. Like the the challenge didn't didn't take away from it. Yeah, just way too much. It's just stopping every like ten feet so like dialogue can yeah. pop up. Uh, and then we have uh, a list from Mr. Armes Jackson. Number five, he said Hollywood Hollywood Squares for the Nintendo. Most of these game show games on the NES were not very good, but this one had a bit of charms and ca charm and captures that sense of humor that the show had. I did not even know they made a Hollywood Squares game. I have never heard Nintendo. of this until we just read it. Never heard of it. Hmm. I'm really curious to go find this now. I wonder who was the center square. Mario. <laughs> Mr. T. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, number four, Rambo for the NES, my most rented game ever. Took mechanics from Adventures of Link, reskinned elements from the movie, license on top of it with horrible translation of the dialogue, all form into one huge mess I couldn't get enough of. Nothing says 80s like taking rated R properties of a man who has PTSD from the Vietnam War and make him a cartoon for children. I mean, that's the 80s in a nutshell. Yeah. I've never played the Rambo game. I've heard of it. It's real. It, it was one of the first fir one of the first games I played for the Ninten Nintendo. I remember borrowing it from my friend Joey, who lived down the street, and he had a Nintendo before I did, and he let me borrow it. And I just couldn't figure it out. Like it's so, like you think Adventure of Link is bad with the side scrolling, like can't figure out where the hell you're supposed to go. Rambo just ramps it up to ten. Like, I had no clue where I was supposed to be going in that game. I would still probably like that game more than Adventures of Link. Probably, yeah. And at number three, Broken Helix, PS1. The first PS game he ever owned. Tons of hours were spent on this one. Bruce Campbell in all his glory. Cheesy, low-budget sci-fi goodness that kept me coming back again and again. I don't remember this game. I don't know, but he had me at Bruce Campbell. Yeah, Bruce Campbell, I'm in. 100%. Groovy. Uh, number two, Halo ODST, game that should have been a DLC pack, but they decided to make a cash grab from Bungie while they were fine-tuning Reach to be released a year later. Lighting was horrible, story was lackluster, voice acting was all right, but the gameplay was below average. Weird, this is, I just couldn't get enough of it. Playing Firefight with my son is the one game mode that kept us coming back over and over again. I don't remember ODST being that bad. I thought it was a pretty great game. It wasn't as bad as some of the reviews, but it's no Halo trilogy yeah. or Reach for sure. It was yeah, like you, you never really think about it when you think of Halo. Like if someone mentions ODSC, you're like, oh yeah, that was a thing. Well, like you're in the mood for Halo. It's it's just more Halo. You're just not a Spartan. Yeah. Then for his number one sprung for the DS. This was a suggested purchase. Dating sims have always held a weird little stigma about them, and this one is no different. But that's why I like this particular one, too. Ridiculous dialogue and outrageous characters take this game to new heights or lows. Either way, a hilarious time to be had. Have you ever played Sprung? I have not, but the DS had some great games. You like have? Has anybody here ever played a dating sim? No. It's such a popular genre now. 
I remember when they had they had little dating sim flash games for E Bombs World, like back in the early two thousands. Really? Yeah. Huh. That's no, all I've, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've never heard of this game, but we were having this conversation the other day. Like the DS, if you've never played it, it was actually a great system. A lot of good games for the DS. And then of course, you know, the three DS kind of gave new life to it. I wish they still dedicated more time to it, but with the Switch being a hybrid system, like I get it, but a lot of fun games for the 3DS. They're about to discontinue the store, I oh, think. Oh, I know. Yeah. Maybe they should take some of those resources and make the Switch store better. That thing is a horrible, unwieldy mess. Yeah. I mean, we've talked about that like ad nauseum, <laughs> so it's like just beating a dead horse at this yeah. point. But Sorry, but uh, until you improve it, I ain't spending 50 bucks on it. Yeah, me neither. So that we got about five minutes left on the show. Does anybody have any uh, guilty pleasure games they'd like to throw out there? Jacob, what's your guilty pleasure Call game? Duty. Call of Duty. Any of them. Yeah. I did put a lot of time into Modern Warfare. <laughs> See, I haven't played Grand Theft Sim. Auto since, like, Last one I played was Vice City. I think that was the last one I played. Yeah. It's been a while. It's been a long time. <laughs> Thanks for making me feel old. <laughs> and good. the thing is, they put out five for like three console generations. Yeah, they did. They did. Now. Like, they did. They ever going to make a new one or just? Yeah. Oh, they did? Yeah, there is a sixth one. Maybe I'll finally play five after six comes out, and I can get five for like you know five bucks at, at GameStop. Yeah. Uh, he mentioned The Sims. Oh yeah, The Sims. That that's her game over there. <laughs> I never got into The Sims. I think I played it for the original Xbox. They had a version of it for the original Xbox. Played it for like a weekend. It just wasn't really my thing. Closest I ever got to Sims was Sim City for the Super Nintendo. Yeah, I love me some SimCity. Any kind of city builder or thing like that. The cool thing about the, the SNES version, so you build your city and you can create disasters if you want to just like tear it down and start over. You can send Bowser yeah. into your city and just set it on fire. That's the greatest part, sending it's Bowser awesome. in to kill your people and destroy the city. It's well, awesome. I wasn't going to go as far as killing the people, but... <laughs> See what else? Uh, roller coaster tycoon. Yeah, roller coaster tycoon. Oh, man, I love me some roller coaster tycoon. It was. Yeah, I could play roller coaster tycoon right now. I can't recall ever playing roller coaster tycoon. Dude, it's. I think they actually have a have them for the Switch now. I think. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah, I think you can get the, the original version on Steam for probably like a dollar. Now it's so cheap. Yeah. One day I'll, I, I say this like almost every week, one day I'll try it. It's in my long backlog of games. Yeah, there's so much. Oh, there's a mobile version of it too? Really? Hmm. Yeah, I spent a long Yeah. Really? Nice. Yeah, I don't need that in my life. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad enough I have Sims, uh, Civilization VI on the Switch because, like, that. I don't know what they did to that game to make it run so smooth on the Switch, but you wouldn't think, like, it's such a a deep game, like, uh, as far as, like, the, the minutia and the, like, the. I don't know, just the nitpickiness you can get with it. And they pulled it off with the Switch. And I, I don't know how they did it. Because normally I play those games on computer. Like the last one I had, the, had Civ Five was on the, the, my computer and played the hell out of that. And then I was like, I got six. Somebody sold me six for the Switch for like 20 bucks when it first came out. Because they bought it and didn't like it. And then they sold it to me for 20 bucks. I was like, I'll take it. And... Been playing the crap out of it ever since. Got my 20 bucks worth. Are you still playing a lot of Loop Hero? Yeah, uh, I haven't played in about two weeks because I got to the point where uh, I, I couldn't focus on it because I'm getting old. <laughs> and just, like, watching that little dude go around the, the, the loop was like, 
I would stare at it for so long that when I lit, like looked up and tried to look at like the real world, my eyes would just not even focus anymore. Well, that screen is so small, and the characters are so small that it it puts a strain on your vision. Yeah, and then that dude's so small, just going around like I yeah, just. Ugh. If anybody played Loop Hero, you want to talk about a guilty pleasure game? Holy crap, that game will suck your life away. Yeah, he reviewed it on the show a couple of weeks ago and, and sold me on it. Because you were just saying so many great things about it. I was like, okay, I have to play it. And it, then I got sucked into it. it oh, it's like, it's a weird kind of like deck builder. Like, and, and there's the, it's a loop, basically. Your dude's on this little loop going around the screen. And he, he runs across enemies that sort of like, it's not necessarily random encounters, but it's sort of like it where these little enemies will be on the screen. You stop, you fight them. And it's all automatic. You don't have to, like, actually fight at all. It's all automatic, but you get loot, and then you go and you build up this little town in between your loops, and then you keep going back out on the loop so you can get more stuff to build your town. And you, it's like after, like, you're going to be sitting there for, like, eight hours, and you're like, I can't, I can't stop. Help me. <laughs> uh, it's a fun game, though, but yeah. it, it's, it can get a little frustrating. So I, if you're... Uh, if you're prone to, you know, being addicted to video games, I would probably say stay away from it. But, <laughs> but I think that's going to do it for this week. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, we're we're wrapping up on time. Thank this you, was, everybody. Yeah, thank you all so much for coming us. out. This was fun. Yeah, this is the first time we've ever done like an actual like. You know, it's normally like we we do like a a topic or something that we talk about for the whole hour, but we haven't. We've done a live version of our show one other time. At the, at the old Wayward Kraken. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was a few years ago. Yeah, so. No, this was fun. So, everybody here, if you want to follow us, at Nerd Cave Retro on Twitter, Instagram, Nerd Cave Retro on Facebook. Uh, follow us both at JFunktastic, at Derek underscore Diamond. Go buy our merch at ncrmerch.com. We got all kind of cool T-shirts. The new Wally Phelps T-shirt. Yeah, we got a new T-shirt for Wally Phelps that says, Live Long and Smoke Meats. And... Uh, <laughs> We got some cool stuff over there. You can get masks, you can get wall art, mugs, uh, computer bags, T-shirts, everything. You want and, it, they got it. Yeah, and if you want to support the show, patreon.com slash nerdcaveretro, where as little as a dollar a month gets you all the extra episodes and helps keep the lights on for us. If you can't do that, I understand times are tough. Leave us a review wherever fine podcasts are giving away for free. So Derek, please tell them what it's all about. May the way of the hero lead to the Triforce.